this video is because I'm going to explain on case study number 6 which is forest allocation and conservation in Tasmania can both win by Evan Arroli and Michael J. Brown. First of all, what is this case study about? Okay, this case study will overview us on the use of a consensus building process which involves The purpose of the process was to develop policies for forest land use for uncut forests outside of forest reserves. This case had occurred in the island state of Tasmania in southern Australia where 14% of Tasmanians are dependent on forestry for their livelihood. Now, I'm going to talk about conflicts. What is conflict? Conflict has been defined as differences in goals, perceptions or interests between driven groups of individuals. This case study illustrates forest land use conflicts that have arisen regarding uncut forests that are outside forest reserves. As I told earlier, Tasmanians are highly dependent on forestry for their livelihood, and there is a great demand for wood and wood-based products. The island's high endemism in both flora and fauna has also attracted the concern of conservationists. When we have conflicts occur, we must have its resolutions. Efforts to resolve the conservation and utilization issues from this case were initially carried out through a government-formed commission of inquiry in 1987. The commission was charged to investigate the debated land area and to recommend upon its possible designation as world heritage status. However, this process which was conducted in an adversarial legal arena had failed to produce a satisfactory solution. The Commonwealth government rejected the commission's findings and instead proposed a compromise solution that attempted to balance the diverse interests. The conflict was not, however, resolved by this decision. Even so, some valuable lessons were gained in this process such as in 1989, a parliamentary accord was signed, which afterwards led to an agreement between the major forest land use disputants such as timber industry, private forests, landholders, unions, environmental groups and government agencies to jointly develop a forest and forest industry strategy. This agreement represented a turning point as it finally showed each group's willingness to formally acknowledge one another's agendas and work together to resolve the issues in dispute. Later on, the Forest and Forest Industry Council was required to engage in a multi-party consensus building debate to construct a forest and forest industry strategy. Take note that this debate had occurred without the assistance of a professional independent mediator. Anyhow, the process had involved few establishments such as By creating a win-win strategy for addressing land use conflicts, the process created new ground in the relations between land use adversaries. Unfortunately, not all of the groups involved supported the final document, primarily the environmental groups. Nonetheless, the state government proceeded to implement the major reforms negotiated by the parties, many of which have also been legislatively adopted in the Public Land Administration and Forest Act of 1991. The key components of the strategy had included In conclusion, conflicts that are properly addressed can be an opportunity for problems to be identified and solved. Any approach to conflict management must be appropriate for the context in question. From this case study, we can conclude that this case had utilized formal legal mechanisms in order to resolve the conflict. Approaches such as consensus building forums and adversary groups is necessary in approaching intensive stakeholders' involvement. We know that to reach a satisfactory resolution to a protected area conflict can be very difficult. The Commonwealth Government had done an appropriate strategy where they compromised solution that aimed to balance diverse interests of each stakeholders. Secondly, this case showed that trust building strategies between stakeholders is crucial for them to be able to agree to a solution rather than just fighting positions when dealing with conflict resolution. Lastly, this case had also illustrated the importance of mediators. This is proven when the final document of forest and forest industry strategy did not gain full support from all groups involved. This is due to the debate done did not use mediators while in fact mediators can help enforce ground rules, suggest solutions and serve as a buffer between the stakeholders. 
Mediation can be used early in conflict resolution effort to help the process and should be considered especially when the conflict is distinctly adversarial and have a great mistrust among the stakeholders. All in all, related parties should all learn appropriate ways to manage conflicts in protected areas in order to achieve progress and have a brighter future for all life forms. That's all from me. Thank you.